Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd I hope it's a fillah I thought it would be important for us to go over the treaties, a very short treaties, but beneficial, mufid, mufid jiddan, uh, a beneficial treaties about how Ahl Sunnah should be merciful to one another and how they should be merciful to Salafia. And being merciful to Salafia this is in reference to not taining and tarnishing the concepts of Salafiyyah, the Da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, by mixing it with the Da'wah to Hizbiyyah and cultism and breaking into groups and sects. Kulu Hizbi Maladehim Farihun. And why that is important or why this treaties has immense value is because we've seen in contemporary times an immense or an increase in deviance from the Minhaj of the Salaf. And we've seen many people, groups and sects of individuals splitting, but all claiming Salafiyyah. And as we said countless times, as our ulama say, al-ibra bi haqa'iq laysa bi musammiyat. That the reality of something is not in its claim, but rather it's in its substance. And that Ahabat al is the premise of this treatise by Sheikh Bender Al Utaybi Hafidallahu Ta'ala. And He began the treaty by saying, all praise is to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. May peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From the greatest blessings of Allah, upon every Muslim worshiper is that Allah the Most High guides him to the path of Tawheed and Sunnah. and keeps him safe from the paths of the people of deviation. After this, Allah guides him by making him firm upon it. Meaning firm upon the path of Tawheed and sunnah not wavering right or left. This is a blessing because if a person begins upon the sunnah for a period of time and then he slips up towards evil, he will be like those people who commit evil actions, considering them to be good deeds. He thinks his actions are according to Islam and the sunnah, and yet they are not so. He considers his actions to be from Salafiyyah, whereas in reality his actions are far from Salafiyyah. This is an important, immensely important point that the Sheikh is mentioning at the very beginning of the treaties that I want us to take home and benefit from this treaties and that is that yes someone can begin calling to the, the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and someone can even traverse to be on the minhaj and the methodology of the salaf al-salih for a significant portion of their life or all or most of their life or less than that 
but it is very likely, or it is very possible, I should say, that a person can deviate. And this is why, as I've said many times, that we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah in Surah Al Fatiha and say, Ihdina Surat Al Mustaqeen. Guide us to the straight path. We always and constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance to be on the Surat Al Mustaqeen. And we constantly supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the supplications of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. For example, with the supplication that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, As-salallahu al-ikhlas wa thabat. Oh, Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for thabat. And thabat ahabata fillah, this is in reference to being firm upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because it is easy for the shaitan to trick us up. And it is easy for us to go astray because we're mere human beings. We have shortcomings, we're weak. Our desires are constantly, we're at war with our desires. And we're constantly at war with those things which take us away from the sunnah of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in fact take us away from Islam. And so therefore, it is easy when trials and tribulations befall us to be jarred and stunned and for some of the people they totally lose sight and they go astray and leave the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so in this regard we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us thabat fi dinihi, to give us firmness in our religion. Because we've seen and witnessed countless examples, and this is not just for the lay person. For how many du'at, and more so, and even better yet, how many ulama that were known for the sunnah years and years of following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and calling to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and adhering to the madhab of the Salaf and writing and lecturing and calling to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but then they went astray desires crept or they deviated in some masail or they began to follow and emulate the various groups of Hezbiya. So this is the point at hand. There are many, or there are those callers, I should say, that call and claim and have names and organizations in which they refer to themselves as Salafi and refer to themselves as Ahl Sunnah. But when we look at their behavior and characteristics, as we'll see as we go through this brief treatise, we'll see how they went astray or how they deviate by calling to themselves, calling to their group, calling to one, two, three, four scholars, claiming that they are the flag bearers of the sunnah, that they're the only ones on the sunnah, that whatever they say is almost as if it's wahi. And you think that this is a joke. You think that this is just a claim that I've made. Some people will probably say this, but it's true because we've interacted with individuals for years, for years and years, and you can just go through their 
countless lectures and their countless posts all over the internet and see how some people make ta'asab li personalities. They have a blind prejudice to personalities as much as the, the, the Sufi deviants. As much and sometimes more. In that they say, Sheikh so-and-so said this, this is, that's it, that's the end of the story. As if, as if they're uh, quoting from the Quran and the Sunnah. And even worse yet, and I challenge you, and I don't challenge you, I invite you, because this is for your own guidance, if you are just a follower, and if you're just a small student, that I want you to look to the people that you listen to, from the du'at and the callers, and if you hear that when they're making refutations and when they're speaking about issues that all they do is mention Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so, that you hear more out of their mouths about Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh than you hear Qala Allah wa Qala Rasul, then this is an indication for you and I want you to use this. This is a qa'id of Ahl Sunnah. This is a principle of Ahl Sunnah. This is a principle for your guidance if you want to know the truth. And kuntum sadiqeen. If you're really truthful, look to these examples. So we're going to get into this fantastic treatise, which has a lot of benefit to offer. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa